Yesterday, all of our cabinets were delivered. Um, we are... Half-made cabinets from okay. Lowe's. Ready, go! <laughs> oh, she's got spitties. Yeah. It's like bubble, oh, well. it's like, it's like a bubble that is containing spit. Yeah. Had a secret surprise in there. Okay, ready? Here we go. Yeah. Yesterday, our craft-made cabinets from Lowe's were delivered, and over the next few days, we're hoping to finish the install of our entire kitchen and the bedroom behind me. So something that is really integral to a part of any kitchen design are filler pieces, trim pieces, and panels. All of these are going to make the cabinets look seamless. So this side panel was provided uh, from our designer. A couple reasons for it. Number one, it's got the finished piece on the front. It's going to allow the dishwasher to butt up against this and look really clean and nice. But also, this panel will actually support the countertop because uh, the dishwasher supports no load. It just slides in under the counter. So this will support the countertop. We're going to level this up, find the studs, and attach it to the wall. Since there's a small gap here where the front panel meets the side support, um, I've measured a shim and I'm putting it in place so that this lines up nice and parallel with the wall. We are now moving on to the fridge wall. We're starting with this filler panel up top here. We had to cut 12 inches uh, across and 21 inches up in order to clear the duct up there. So the next thing that's going to happen, our cabinet above the fridge here will get installed right here. Another filler panel down the side here, another small cabinet here, and then I'm standing where the range will end up. So we're making a lot of progress. It's a new day. Yesterday we focused mostly on the kitchen. Today we are going to work on the mudroom. And the mudroom has a lot of unique fillers and panels that we're going to need to focus on. So we've got a lot of work to do. Let's go. We have two panels, one on each side of the stacked washer and dryer. We measured our height, so we're gonna go ahead and rip this down. We protected the cut with blue tape so the edge doesn't chip. Safety glass is on, let's go. We're going to go to Lowe's to buy one by common pine boards and we're going to use that as crown to trim out the top of the kitchen and mudroom cabinets. This is a drop and I'm just going to cut off a little piece of this and I'm going to have them color match it to white paint that's going to match the cabinet. Boys finish hanging cabinets in the mudroom. I'm going to use this time to install toe kicks in the kitchen. I just need to cut them down to size and I'll use um, one inch finish nails, tack them into place, and it'll finish the look of the cabinet. Our 
our cabinets come with these little fill sticks and it's sort of like a waxy material that matches the finish of our cabinets and you basically just rub it on the holes that I just made with the nail gun and they'll disappear. We are installing the finished panel on the back of our peninsula so you don't see the unfinished cabinetry when you're sitting on the couch in the living room. So all we have to do, push this up here, make sure you got a nice solid tight plumb line against the wall. I've already scribed my line across the back here. We're gonna rip this down and install it with some finish nails. Officially completed the installation of all of the cabinets. We're really happy with how everything turned out. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Kim's sitting here on our mudroom mm -hmm. bench. And now the last few things we've got to do are installing some of the finish panels that really tie the room together. We have a false back here because when we are going to install this big finish panel that's going to match the kitchen peninsula, it felt overly awkward to hang your coat up on such a deep bench. So this is just gonna bring that wall a little closer to the front, make it more natural, and, and we'll all- It'll encourage people to hang their coat up and keep the place tidier. <laughs> in the home stretch kitchen was installed mudroom was installed um, cabinets and all of the really big filler panels are all in place um, behind us the deck is pretty empty all we have left are some trim pieces a lot of detail work filler panels we're ready to go all right let's do it all said and done we got our cabinets installed we've got about a three inch gap to the left of our cabinet structure here as part of our design plan we were given a three inch filler panel it's going to get uh, fastened here. In order for us to have something to attach to, we're going to take this 2x4 drop, install it from the inside of our cabinet box here so that we have something to nail the actual finish panel to from the front. So any seam that would be left over, we'll be able to just fill with caulk, hit it with a little bit of touch-up paint, it'll look like it was always there. Okay, we're at the point where we now need to go to Lowe's. So the things that we're looking for are crown for around the top cabinets in the kitchen and around the run of cabinets in the mudroom. And then we also need to look for something small to hide the edges of the wood panel that we have around our mudroom bench. Above our mudroom bench, we also still need to install a white filler panel and that also needs trim. First, we're gonna take some measurements, make our list, then we're going to head to the store. This is my drop. It matches our cabinets. So we're just going to get this color matched and get a little port to bring home so we can paint all the crown. We're here Lowe's and we needed to find some trim that was going to help us trim out the box with the maple backboard inside the bench seat of the mudroom. So we found this cove, uh, 11 16 by 11 16 it's going to be just enough to cover the nail holes and finish everything off. We're putting a white panel above the mudroom bench but it has a raw edge. We want to cover that and I think that this half inch stop is going to be the perfect way to conceal that raw edge, we'll just have to paint it and prime it using 
the paint that we just got color matched. We have everything we need. We have all the trim pieces to complete the project, I hope. Fingers crossed. Somebody slept through the whole shopping experience. <laughs> I have my half inch by three quarter inch pine stock cut down to 48 inches. What that's going to do is allow uh, us to cover the raw edge of the plywood when we install the white panel up here. I need to do this first so I can get my exact measurement front to back and know where to cut that board. This is the code we picked out, just a pretty standard curved inset and we've got to cut in our 45s. So this is going to fill all of our gaps nicely, so we're going to go ahead and pop it in. Fabricating the pseudo crown molding trim for the top of this run of cabinets. Uh, old house problems. My gap right here is not quite two inches. If we follow the run all the way over to the right here, the gap is a little more than an inch. So what I've done, took a measurement here, 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 and here at the joint of each of my cabinets. And now I'm gonna custom cut a piece of primed one by three down to fit the gap perfectly. Got my piece cut, pretty happy with how it turned out. What I've done is there's a two by four up here that you probably can't see. In front of it is a three quarter inch slug that mimics the front of the cabinet, so I've got something to nail into. With all the final pieces in place, there is the final, final step, and that is filling in every last little crack and gap because you just can never get every filler piece perfect. So I have three things that I use, a quick dry spackle, a tube of caulk, a cup of water. 